Paracletus International Ministries encourages you to excel in Christ daily. We are living in an evil time. If you don't believe it, just turn your news on. Amen. You can turn on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, uh, uh, MSNBC, Fox, and whatever else they got out there. Yeah. Amen. If you got any kind of perception, you would know that we're living in evil times. Yes, we are. Amen. Because all of them will tell us bad things happen. Yes, God. Amen. I don't care how you turn. What news you turn on? Amen. They talk about bad things happening. If it's not a, a killing somewhere, it's a storm someplace. That's right. A lot of things going on in this world, amen, to let us know, amen, that we are in the last days. Yes, we are. But Jesus said, when you see these things happen, he said, this is only the beginning. The beginning. Amen. And this is just the beginning. Man, I don't want to see the end of it. Oh, my God. Because the beginning is messed up. Mm -hmm. Make you look like your praise is going to leave you. Devil have all kinds of obstacles. I was listening to a message on yesterday. Where they talk about obstacles and how you have to overcome obstacles in life. Because the devil brings things your way. He brings things your way to try to discourage you. Jesus said he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But we got to fight. And never lose our praise. Never lose our praise. Amen. All right, we're going to go into the word. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to come one more time to be in your presence. Yes, in the presence of these, your people. We ask you right now, God, as we go into this word that you speak to us, the word of life, that you're going to be on this word, O oh God, and that what we speak, O oh God, be straight from the throne of heaven. Don't let it be nothing man-made or man thought of, but let it be all God-inspired and God-breathed. Speak not to these, your people. And we will hear your word and receive your word. Yes. Your word is life. Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes. So, Father God, we love your word. We receive your word. Yes. We accept your word. And we let your word develop in us, O oh God. Yes. What you want us to be in Jesus' name, I pray. Yes. O oh God, speak to these lips of clay. O oh God, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you for it, Father. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I thank God for another day, another, amen, opportunity to come before him, amen, in the word of God. Amen. I thank God for, first of all, for his son, Jesus, amen, who died for my sins. Amen. I thank God for that. I thank God for the Holy Ghost, amen, being in my life. I thank God for my family. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll say it this way. I thank God for my future. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for my children. Yes, Lord. Amen. And their spouses, Nikhil and Tanya. Yes, Lord. Faye and Sammy. Thank God for Adrian. Thank God for Tanisha and Katib. And for my grandchildren, my yes. great grandchildren. Amen. Um, I say this all the time when I'm praying with my children, my grandchildren at home. I thank God for my biological official, my biological adopted God, and my unofficial children and grandchildren. Amen. So I thank God for my entire family. I thank God for my cousins. Amen. I thank God for those who are listening, who are little, amen, uh, nieces and nephews and cousins. Amen. I love all of you. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for you being in my life because yeah. I realized that. God used all of that to make the person you see before you today. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Praise God. I realize God did that. Amen. God is too wise to make a mistake. Yeah. And God knows exactly what he's doing. Yes, he does. We may not know what he's doing, but he always knows what he's doing. Yeah. I listen to Justice Defender sometimes, and he's teaching. Amen. And he goes off into jokes. Talk about jokes. And he comes and he says, but I didn't forget where I was. Yeah. I know what I'm saying. Amen. So even though he goes off a side excursion, he always comes back to that point. He said, I ain't forget where I was. Yeah. Amen. I said it to say this. 
No matter what comes or what goes, good or bad, don't ever forget God. Yeah. We are living in an evil time. If you don't believe it, just turn your news on. Amen. You can turn on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, uh, uh, MSNBC, Fox, and whatever else they got out there. Yeah. Amen. If you got any kind of perception, you would know that we're living in evil times. Yes, we are. Amen. Because all of them will tell us bad things happening. Yes, God. Amen. Okay, how you turn, what news you turn on? Amen. They talk about bad things happening. If it's not a, a killing somewhere, it's a storm someplace. That's right. A lot of things going on in this world, amen, to let us know, amen, that we are in the last day. Yes, we are. But Jesus said, when you see these things happen, he said, this is only the beginning. The beginning. Amen. And this is just the beginning. Man, I don't want to see the end of it. Oh, my God. Because the beginning is messed up. Amen. I, I think about last Sunday night, amen, a week ago. Amen. They had a mass shooter there in Las Vegas. 58 people plus the shooter. Amen. Lives were taken by a cruel and evil devil. Mm -hmm. I did a Facebook live there last week and I talked about the devil doesn't care. He don't, see, the devil doesn't love people. He doesn't look at, well, you know, that one serving me, so let me spare that person. No. He doesn't love people. He'll kill his own, this is what he'll kill those who belong to God. Mm. Amen. So you're thinking, well, you know I'm escaped. I mean, I'm not here in the world and I feel like I'm safe there. I'm not going to the church. Uh-uh, you're not safe out there. The devil will destroy you out there. Amen. Because he don't know how to preserve life. Mm. He don't have that potential to preserve life. Mm -hmm. The only thing he has potential to do is Jesus said, to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. And so he'll do that no matter how you turn. Mm -hmm. So you think, well, you know, I got a pretty good life over here in the world. Oh, no, honey. Mm -mm. Oh, no, baby. Your life ain't as good as you think it is. No, it's not. You're just in the wrong place for the devil to get his hand on you right there. Yeah. Because if he gets his hands on you, he'll destroy you. Amen. You can be fighting. I don't want nobody to serve God. I don't want anybody to serve the Lord. Serving him. But if he gets his hands on you, he'll kill you. Mm -hmm. Right in this, you said, get rid of God. Don't have nothing to do with God. He'll still kill you. He'll do it. Why? He has, he has no love for people. Mm -hmm. Amen. He has no love for people. And he does not know how to cherish his own. My God. But thank God there's a God who knows how to cherish his own. Yes, he does. Yes. Ooh, glory be to God. I'm so glad that God that I serve, he knows how to cherish us. Yes. He knows how to put his arms around us and embrace us and hold us close to him and say, oh, You are my child and I love you so much. That's your name, Lord. Glory be to God. I am so glad I know God. I'm so glad I know God. Amen. I'm so glad I know God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Let me get the word. I I, I, just, I, I, I get in the word this morning. I'm going to sit down this morning. Amen. And do a little teaching. Amen. Go in your Bible. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 17. Just want to read one verse of scripture. Proverbs 17. Verse 1, I'm sorry, one verse of scripture, and the verse is verse 3. As you see on your screen, amen, we're going to talk about God knows your potential. God knows what's in you. Amen. So we're going to say some things, amen, that you need to hear, amen, as you allow God to bring out your full potential, amen, to bring out who you really are. Yeah. Proverbs 17 and 3 says, the finding part is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries the hearts. Mm. When I talk about that verse, I say it this way, the pot is for silver, mm -hmm. and the fire is for gold, mm -hmm. but the Lord tries the hearts. Now notice here that there is a graduation, if, I, if you may, between silver and gold. Silver is more precious, not as precious as gold is. Gold is being more precious than silver. And so silver, because it's something like at the bottom of this thing, mm -hmm. when it's in the fire, it needs something to buffer it, to protect it. Mm -hmm. Silver can't take straight fire. Uh -huh. You got to put something, put silver into something so that the flame that is purifying it can, can protect it from that fire. Right. So you put it in a pot, and that pot is a buffer between the fire and the silver. But yet there's enough heat coming through the pot to purify the silver. Right. The gold being better and higher quality and being a more value than silver mm -hmm. can take the direct heat. Right. 
You can put gold in the fire, directly in the fire. Wow. And no matter how high you turn that gold up, my God. All, I'm sorry, no matter how high you turn the heat up, all it's going to do is bang out the purity of that gold. Yeah. Amen. If you see some gold that's 10 carat, 20 carat, whatever carats, amen, the higher the carat, the more heat it had to go through. Yeah. Amen. The 10 carat gold doesn't go through the heat that an 18 carat gold goes through. Yeah. It doesn't go through the heat that 24 carat gold goes through. But the more heat it can stand, the more heat it can take. That determines its value. It determines its worth. Now, I want to say something here along this, this point. I'm talking about God knowing your potential, but if you don't realize your own potential, my, my. God may put, allow you in the fire, God realize that you're gold, but you can act like you're silver in that pot. Mm -hmm. Because you say, I can't take this, it's just too much heat. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of this heat because it's just too much, it's too great. So even though God's allowing you to go through the fire because God knows that you are fire level, because of your attitude, you make yourself that like silver. Mm -hmm. You want to put yourself in a pot. God, buffer me. God, protect me because I can't stand this heat. Mm -hmm. That's another message. That's not my message for the day. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to know yes. in that last phrase that the fire is not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we sang the song and say, have you been tried by the fire? And we think about that and say, you know what I'm going through? Fire is developing who I am. Mm -hmm. Fire is not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. Fire is good enough for the gold to purify the gold. But in order to purify you and to bring out of you what's in you, mm -hmm. God has got to be your fire. Yes, God. God has got to be the one that brings it out. God has got to be the one who preserves you. And God has got to be the one that brings out your value. And God will take mm -hmm. your heart and try it because only yes. God can try your heart. Yes. Fire can't do it. My God. Even though people may lie on you, that lie on you can't preserve, can't tell you who you really are. Even though people may talk about you and call you everything but a child of God, them doing that can't determine who you really are. Only yes. God can determine yes. who you really are. Yes. Make a statement. It'll be a little strange to some of you. Only people, let me say I can say this. Only things on a level and greater than it can make it. Well, here's what I'm saying. Man tames lions, man tames sheep, man tames birds, man tames fish, man tames a lot of things. But no lion, no fish, no bear, no sheep tames a man. Yeah. Why? Because man is higher up than the lion, the sheep, and the bear, mm -hmm. and those things. So those things can't tame man. They can't train man, but man can train them. Man can domesticate them, but they can't domesticate man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, a sheep can train another sheep. An eagle can train, train another eagle. Why? Because they're on the same level with one another. And that eagle knows what it has to do in order to make it, so it can teach the younger eagle how to make it. Yes. So because it's on the same level with the eagle, it can train another eagle. But the eagle, no matter how smart it is, and how far it can look, can't train a man. Cannot bring out of you your potential. Can't bring out of you what's on the inside of you. Why? Because it's below you. Mm -hmm. I play with Tanisha's cat. My daughter has a cat at the house. And I play with that cat. And I said to that cat, when you see a human come and run, he look at me like, you crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. But I said, when you see a human come and run, because you're an animal, you stay in an animal's place, you stay below me, I'm a, I'm a man, you move when I come through. And he look at me like I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Only God knows what's on the inside of you. And because God, first of all, is on a higher level than you, he can pull out of you what's in you. Mm -hmm. But now, let me have you go to scripture. I want to put on a little concept here that you need to see. Turn with me to Psalms 82 and verse 6. Psalms 82 and verse 6. I'm heading somewhere with this message today. 
This is God talking. And what I'm about to read, some people have problems with. But let me see if I get you on board with this today. God says in Psalms 82 verse 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, we don't have a problem with that last phrase, we are children of the Most High. But we do have problems with ye are gods. Amen. Because we don't want to see that we have, we are gods. The, now, I want you to notice that this is lowercase g. We are not God. That, we are not him. But we are lowercase g, gods. And you think about this. We say this. He is what? God of gods. Mm -hmm. and Lord. King of kings. Mm -hmm. Lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Who are the gods that he's the God of? Okay? Go to John chapter 10. And let's look at verse 33. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And they get ready to stone him. And so Jesus in verse 33 interrupts him and says, For a good word, I'm sorry, the Jews answer him saying, For a good word we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, Making thyself God. Jesus in verse 34 says, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I just read it, Psalms 82 6. I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him, or why say ye of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent him into the world, that blasphemy because I said, I'm the Son of God. So what Jesus said, Jesus going back, he's validating Psalm 82, 6. He said, God sent the word to his people, and to those people, he called them gods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hang in there. We're going to get it to you. Okay. All right, go to 2 Corinthians. I'm heading somewhere with this message today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. But before you go there, go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And look at verse 13. Hebrews 1, 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they the angels? Not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Let me read that verse out of the Amplified. Verse 14 out of the Amplified. Are not the angels all ministering spirits, in parentheses, servants, sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation? When I read the scripture, I realize that angels are servants and not gods. Say that again. When I read that scripture, I realize that angels are servants, not gods. They are not small G-O-D. They're definitely not capital G-O-D. But they're not lowercase G-O-D. They are servants. Okay? Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's start at verse 3. But even if I gospel, I'm reading it wrong, what the King James, where the King James. Verse 3. But if I gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom those who are lost. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Stop for a moment. In whom the God of this world, we know that to be Satan. How did Satan become a God? Do, 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 do. How did Satan become a God? When God didn't create him a God. Mm. How did he become a God? 
The only way that anything can be made of God is by another God. God didn't make Satan a God. Who made Satan a God was Adam. Adam made Satan a God. So how could Adam make Satan a God unless Adam himself was a God? Keep in mind, talk about lowercase g, not capitalized. I'm talking about him, the great one. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about a class. So Adam had to be a God in order to make Satan a God. And you can see this in our lives because we make men gods. We make our jobs gods. We make our homes gods. We make our cars gods. We make our money gods. We make all kind of things around us gods. Why? Because only a God can make a God. What are you saying, preacher? Why are you going through all that? Because God knows the potential he has within us as his children. God knows what's on the inside of us. And only somebody on our level or above us can pull that out of us so we can come up to it. Only God can pull that out of us. The angels, I mean, the angels can't pull it out of us. Not even fire. That's why I said the fire is not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. Because the fire can't pull out your potential. It can't do it. What God does is this. God realizes your potential and he puts you in the fire so it will enhance your potential. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can explain it to you. You got a man who makes pottery. Vases. Like this one. He goes through he puts it on a wheel, he shapes it, he forms it. Once he has shaped it and formed it and got it where he wants it, he sees the beauty in it. We don't see it yet, mm -hmm. but he sees it. Mm -hmm. But to bring out his beauty, to make sure his beauty is really seen, to enhance that beauty, he puts it in the fire. Mm -hmm. He doesn't put it in the fire to make the vase. He puts the vase in the fire because the vase is already made. He puts the vase in the fire because the vase is already made. Mm -hmm. Not because the fire, he doesn't put the, fire, the vase in the fire to make the vase. He put the vase in the fire because the vase is already made. Mm -hmm. So God allows us to go to the fire because God sees in us mm -hmm. what we have in us that allows us to stand the fire. Mm -hmm. what did, why did God tell Abraham to offer up your only son, Isaac, whom you love? Mm -hmm. Why? Because God saw in Abraham that ability to offer Isaac. Abraham didn't know it, but God knew it. Mm. So God said, give me your son. Why? Because he knew if Abraham was already at the point in his walk with God that he would give God everything, including Isaac. But Isaac, Abraham didn't know. So for three days, he's walking to this mountain, and God, that word God gave him is guiding him and driving him and directing him. But yet, in him, he kept seeing Isaac alive. The Bible says he saw him alive. He didn't know how God was going to get him back alive. Mm -hmm. All he knew was, I got a promise from God. Promise. God said, this child, I'm going to bless yes. you and everybody through this child, Isaac. Yes. So he didn't know how God was going to get him alive. But in his heart, he knew when he came up that mountain, I was coming down with him. So it, but then think about Sarah. I think about Sarah in this story. Sarah's a mother. She had waited 90 years to have a child. Mm -hmm. It was her only child. Yeah. She had waited 90. Some people have children, they've been 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, by the time they turned 35. Yeah, Lord. But Sarah had to wait 90 years for this child. Yeah, Lord. And Sarah, can you imagine Abraham going to Sarah and saying, now look, girl, God told me to give Isaac as a sacrifice. Yeah. That's a mama. Mama protect their children. Just protect their boys. Yes. So he's asking her for not only her only child, but for a boy. Uh. And Sarah hears this. And I'm sure in her heart, she said, uh-uh, no. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Yes. This is my only one. This is the only child I got. This is the only one. Sure, Abraham, you missed it. You sure you didn't hear God right. God probably told you to give a cow. God probably told you to give a goat. God probably told you to give a sheep. Mm 
Yes. But not my boy, not my only child, not my only son. Yes. I'm thinking about this sometimes. I had four children by Lila. And if I walked with Lila to any of them, I don't care how much, how bad Lila was with Nikhil. I'm used to kill since he's right here. I don't care how bad Lila was with Nikhil. If I said to Lila, Lila, God said to me, give Nikhil as a sacrifice. Mm, she God. said, uh-uh, no, you're not doing that. You're not doing You're not taking my son and kill my son. Amen. Why? Because she's going to protect that child. Yes, Lord. Now, think about Sarah waiting 90 years to have one child. Mm -hmm. And yet, God, through her husband, said, give that child up. What kind of sacrifice she had to go through to give it up? But she knew her husband. She saw what was in her husband and she trusted her husband enough to say, take him. Let me say this so I can put this again in this message. For those of you who don't know, my lady friend is Pastor Paula. She and I were talking one day, she said to me, she said, I see what's in the inside of you. And she says, I'm going to bring that out of you. Yesterday we were walking, and she looked and she saw how I was walking. And I walk, I didn't realize I did this, I walk taking short steps. Mm -hmm. And I know that this I got arthritis, mm -hmm. and that was hurting. And this time of the year, when the weather turns like this, I can't walk hardly from here to that yes. first row of chairs there. Well, I had to sit down and relax, I call, release my back so my back would stop hurting. So I'm walking these steps like I usually walk in and I'm starting to feel the pain. And she says to me, she says, walk gracefully. So I started playing, like walking gracefully, and I started stepping longer steps. What I didn't realize was, until after I started doing that, that when I started walking the longer steps, taking longer steps, longer strides, mm -hmm. the pain with the arthritis eased up. Yeah. I was able to walk further than I was going to about to tell her, I need to stop and rest for a moment. Uh -huh. But when I began to walk those longer steps, yeah. that began to release my pain, mm -hmm. and I was able to walk on to duration, yeah. to the distance. Amen. She said, I see what's in you, and I'm going to pull it out of you. Mm -hmm. God says to us, I see what's in you, small case G-O-D, I see what's in you, and I'm going to pull it out of you. And so I have formed you, and I've shaped you, and I'm going to put you in the fire so your potential can be enhanced. And when you go on your job, and they're lying on you, and they're talking about you, and they're running you down, and you're complaining, you're acting like silver, saying, God, I need a pot. When God said, the pot is not good enough for you, and the furnace is not good enough for you, but only I'm good enough for you to develop in you what you need bought up out of you. So I put you, I have developed you, I have worked on you, I have saw that potential in you. I know what you can stand. I know what you can take. I know what you can go through with. I know how you can make it. But you got to trust me to bring that potential out of you. Put you in that fire, not the power so the fire can make you, but the fire can prove you. Prove you, enhance you. The beauty I see on the inside of you. You have to trust me. Hallelujah. Because I can bring it out of you. I can bring it through you. I can bring it out. Yes, God. My God, my God. Yesterday morning I was at the house and praying about the ministry. And I said, God, what do I need to do? Because you're trying to put me and Pastor Pop together. This husband might be both pastors. What am I going to do? And God spoke a little, a little things to me. But he said to me, he said, it was Hear her. Listen to what she's telling you. Yeah, that's hard for a man to do. Mm -hmm. For a man to listen to his wife. Hard. Amen, brothers. Amen. It's hard for a man to listen to their wife. She is not my wife, so don't drink that. It's hard for a man to listen to a woman. Amen. But God says, hear her. Listen to her. That's right, God. And so I told her we're going. 
out of town yesterday. I told her, I didn't tell her what God had told me at the time. I said, I'm enrolling myself in glorious school training. Enrolling myself in glorious school training. If you see anything in me that you need, that you know I need to work out, tell me. Yes, sir. See, later on that night, I told him, I said, God told me to listen to you and hear what you got to say. Now, when that was little, little mm -hmm. and you heard me say this a number of times, my weakness was money. Mm -hmm. I'll spend it left, right, up, down, inside, out, round, round, round. I don't care. I didn't care because I wanted something, and as long as I had the dollar to get it, I would get it. Mm -hmm. I didn't care if my light bill were paid. I wanted something, I would get that. I didn't care if I was put outside the house. I wanted that, I would get it. Mm -hmm. So little strength was saving money. So she talked to me and she said, we need to, you need to let me keep the money and let me manage the money. Well, wisdom said, yeah, because hey, I'm blowing it. So I put the money into her hand to manage it. Now, 39 and a half years, I did that. Now, I'm like in this other woman, Pastor Paula. And I said to her, Woman well, God, I got some money. I want you to keep it for me because I may spend it. And she said, I wish I may take it. She said, are you so irresponsible that you can't control money? Oh, my God. And I told her, I said, thank you for not taking that money from me. Because I was trying to use her as a crutch uh -huh. to get me through something that I should have been controlling myself. Yeah. What are you saying? You see, there are things in life we use as crutches when God is saying you're able to walk full stride. Yeah. But we're using things as crutches. We use these things as crutches. And God is saying, no, I'll put you in the fire. Not for the fire to make you, but you've already made it. And as I put you in the fire, so the fire can enhance what's already there. The fire can bring out what's already there in you. Uh -huh. To show you what's on the inside of you. Yeah, but now we want to use crutches. Oh, mama, they're talking about me on a job. Oh, daddy, they're bothering me. It's not crutches. Kind of be like crutches. But the crutches ain't good enough for us. Yeah. What God has put within us, Paul said we have this treasure in earthen yeah. vessels. What God has put within us is that treasure, and God is trying to bring it out of us, and he puts us in the fire so we can see what's in us, and then it comes to the forefront, like the gold, beauty, and power, and brilliance, and, and value comes out in the fire. God is saying, I'm trying to let you see your praise, your value, your worth, your greatness. So I'm putting you in the fire. Stop acting like a silver in a pot and realize that you have value and I'm bringing that value out of you. 2 uh, Corinthians 4, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, He will not let us be tempted above that we are able to bear. Yeah. Think about what that scripture is saying. Pastor Paul said to me, she said, I don't, I didn't like men who were tall. I ain't like big men. And I'm both of them. Tall and big men. I'm about a foot taller than she is. Wow. Amen. A couple hundred pounds bigger than she is. She says to me, she says, man of God, you got to work on your weight. Why don't you tell me to work on my height? Because I can't change that. <laughs> See, she, just, she doesn't tell me to do something I can't do. She tells me to do something I can do. Uh -huh. Work on your weight. So what you're saying? God never asks us to do things we can't do. He only asks us to do things we can do. If God puts us in the fire, he knows we can stand the fire. He's not going to put us in 300 degree fire where we can only stand 100 degree. But he'll put us that 100 degrees so that 100 degree fire can enhance us. But if we fight against the fire, if we fight against God, God can't get out of us what he got in us. You see, everybody listen to me, whether you're in this building or you listen to me about Facebook, 
You were created by God for a purpose. You were created by God for something. God put you here in this earth for something. Everybody. Nobody's put on this earth accidentally. I don't care how you got here. Your mom and dad may say you were an accident. Your mom and dad may say you were not planned. Your mom and dad may say we weren't ready for you to come yet. But God was preparing for you to come. And you came at God's own timing. And God had a purpose for you. As I said, God looked in the beginning, before time. And God saw a problem in the earth. And God said, that's my answer. And the answer was Julius. The answer was Nikhil. The answer was Latanya. The answer was you. The answer was me. The answer was us. And so God puts us in positions so that we could come to where he wants to become. That's right. I close with this. Close with this. Or I'm prepared to close with this. Amen. I was born in New York. About a thousand some miles away from Albany, Georgia. My wife, Lila, was born in Albany, Georgia. God wanted me to have Nikhil, Faye, Adrian, Tanisha. Not John, Mary, Paul, and Alice. But Nikhil, Faye, Agent, and Tanisha. He wanted me to be their daddy. Mm -hmm. And he knew in order to get Nikhil, Faye, Agent, and Tanisha, Julius and Lila had to be married. Mm -hmm. Julius and Mary and uh, Joanna wouldn't have gotten Nikhil, Faye, Agent, and Tanisha. Even if we gave them that name, wouldn't have been Nikhil, Faye, Agent, and Tanisha. Mm -hmm. It would have been another set. But it would have been those set. So in order to get me to marry Lilo, God had to move me from New York by way of Chicago mm -hmm. to Glenville, about 200 miles away. Mm -hmm. And let me raise me raised up in Georgia. I had no intention of going to college. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. On the very first day of my senior year in school, God spoke and said, I want you to go to college. And you heard me say before, I told God, you've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. Because I have no intention of going to college. My plan was to leave and go somewhere and never be heard from again. Never be seen again by anybody who knew me. That was my plan. But by the end of the year, I had enrolled in Albany State. Mm -hmm. Now God got me in the city where Neil is. But I'm in a different church from Leroy. So God brings some people in my life, Otis Farrell, Bobby Pringle, Nick Daniel Wilcox. He brings them in my pathway to get me into the church where Lily is. Then he uses Louise Hamilton to show me Lily's picture. And then Lily became my wife. And I got the key of faith in Tanisha. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? As I close. God does things we don't always understand. That's what I was saying when I first started out. God does things. We may not always understand what he's doing, but he always knows what he's doing. He always knows what he's doing. And so God works things out to bring us to him mm -hmm. and to bring out of us what he has in us. But he can't do that if we reject him. Like Paul, he said, you can't get to preach. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. Yeah. We got to enroll ourselves in God's school of training so God can develop us. Mm -hmm. and bring us to what he wants to bring us to. Yeah. But if we are complaining and crying and mourning, we'll never come to our true word. Mm -hmm. And how many people are listening to me by the sound of my voice? How many people that you know around you that your true value has never came because you are trying to act like silver in a pot instead of acting like the person you are mm -hmm. and that God developed that in you and that God put you in the fire not to make you, but enhance you. So that you would know it's what you were. But guess what I say that? Job. God knew what Job would do. Yeah. He knew exactly what Job would do. Satan said to him, said, God said to him, said, where are you coming from? I'm going to and all the earth. God said, 
Have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him but perfect and upright, one that fear of God and is true of evil? He said to God, does God Job serve you for naught? In other words, God, is it a price that you have to pay Job to make him serve you? But God, I tell you what, take everything he has, take his money, take his cattle, take his children, I'll make him Christian to your face. God said, go ahead. Just don't touch him. Take everything he got. And the Bible says, in the end of that chapter, chapter one, it says, Job maintained or held fast to his integrity. And he didn't charge God foolishly. He didn't charge God foolishly. In other words, even though he said, the Lord give him and the Lord take him away. Blessed be the Lord, the name of the Lord. It was not God that took his animals. It was not God that took his family. It was not God that took what he had. He misapplied it. But he didn't sit there and say, you God, you'll rent the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank. He didn't get mad with God. He didn't get upset with God. He still gave God the praise. And the Bible says, in everything, give praise. Thanks, praise in everything. We're not to thank God for the fire, but we thank God in the fire. We're not to thank God for people persecuting us on our job, but we thank God in the midst of the persecuting us on our job. We're not to thank God for people lying on us, but we're to praise God in the midst of them lying on us. See, God, I give you praise. Somehow I know that God, this is going to work. The song said, this is going to work out for my good. I don't know what you're doing, but God, I submit to you. I put myself in God's school of training. And God, I yield myself to you so you can bring out of me what you want to bring out of me. God knows your potential. And some of you out there, if you listen to me, you may not be saved. You have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You live beneath your privileges. Because the only way you can get your full potential in life, the first step is that you got to come to Jesus. That's step one. I mean, you can't get on first base until you go home plate with a bat in your hand. And you got to swing at the ball and hit it. And when you swing at the ball and hit it, that's repent. That's saying, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Change my life. Change me. I'm tired of the life I'm living. I'm tired of what I'm being. I'm tired of being like I've been in life. I'm tired of this old lifestyle. Then as you hit that connection, then God began to bring you the first base, the second base, and third base, and he brings you back to home plate. Yes, Why? Because he wants you to realize that no matter how bad things are, he can make it all right. He can change it. I heard a story last night, and it broke my heart. And it teaches me a lesson because sometimes I do stupid stuff. I heard about this young boy, who, young man who lost his life doing Facebook Live while driving on the interstate. Mm -hmm. Speeding in the car. Wow. Doing Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. How many times we do stupid stuff? Mm -hmm. And we wonder how, why is our life is where it is. I tell people all the time, I'm an educated man. I'm about to say this bragging. I got two bachelor's degrees. I got two associate degrees. I got a master's degree, and I got an honorary doctorate degree. And yet, I sit before you broke. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I did foolish stuff. I did foolish stuff. Careful. We all do foolish things. Careful. But we got to submit ourselves. And let God, who sees what's in us, bring it out of us. And God can bring it out of you. If you're not saved, just simply pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I ask you, God, to bring me to what you want me to be. Make me, shape me, mold me into the image of your dear son, Jesus. 
I ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, you say just like I was saved. You're on your way to heaven just like I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Praise God for you. It's also says if you need a church home, we at 10 11 West Broad in the city of Albany. Amen. Amen. If we're not for you, we have you find someone who is for you. Yes. Because we want to see you make it to heaven. Yes, Lord. We want to see you make it with the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. God knows your potential. Yes, he does. But in order to bring it out, you got to get on first base. Yes, God. You got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So please, man, please, sir, think about this. Where you want to be 1,000 years from today? And ask yourself, what are you doing to be there? Because 1,000 years from today, you're either going to be with God or you're going to be in hell. It's on two places. That you're going to be 1,000 years from today. Yeah. So which of those two places do you want to be? And ask yourself, what are you doing to get you there? If you want to be in hell, continue on. But if you want to go be with Jesus, you got to turn around. I thank God for you. I love you. Amen. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.